one of the things that I see and hear a lot is that people kind of assume that, you know, there are some people who are really, really good at working with emotions, and there are some people who are really bad at it. And that's honestly not true. It's not this fixed trait that we have. It's actually something that we can grow over time. It's a skill set. And so the great thing is that it's something that we can learn and develop and mature um, and refine over time. And so that's why I want to dedicate um, our class today to really focusing on how we can nurture the set of skills because it actually unlocks a lot of value. Well, okay, but why does it matter for product managers? Well, the thing is that we have to remember product managers are building products for humans and are building products with humans. And so in terms of building for users and for customers, we always need to make sure that we're building for the right pains. And sometimes it's really hard to know whether we've gotten the right pains. Um, if we're not aware of our end users' emotions, um, sometimes they might be very embarrassed to actually share their pains with us. Uh, or they might feel the need to please us during the user interview uh, or during some customer call. And so then they don't give us the constructive criticism that we need to continue to grow our products for success. Um, or if their boss is on a call with them, uh, they might feel a lot of pressure. Um, on top of that, there are a lot of pains that people face that are intangible. You know, If you are um, working in some sort of productivity app, um, being able to give people a sense of progress, that gamification, um, that sense of delight and progress is incredibly important. And it's not something that you're going to be able to get if you just simply look at the numbers or at the metrics or at the functionality. Um, emotions is very much a part of the story of why we see a lot of productivity applications uh, doing really well these days. You know, uh, these next generation versions such as uh, Airtable, Notion, um, Coda, they really celebrate uh, users' progress. Um, superhuman uh, really helps people get people to inbox zero, right? And it, it's very much that emotional uh, work that helps them solve so deeply for their users. And as product managers, we are always working with other fellow human beings. Um, for us to actually build any products at all, we have to work with others. Uh, we have to work with designers and engineers to figure out what to actually go get built. Uh, we have to work alongside um, you know, our cross-functional stakeholders um, to actually roll it out to market, to actually deliver the product. And what we need to keep in mind is that for people to work with us effectively, they need to trust us. They need to believe in us. They need to have confidence in us or else they might second guess a lot of our decisions. Um, they might feel that, hey, you know, I don't feel comfortable making this sacrifice or I don't feel comfortable aligning with this set of priorities because I don't feel like I can trust this person. And what we need to keep in mind is that confidence and trust, you know, while they can be measured, they are not objective. You know, it's not something that a third party observer can, uh, you know, kind of conjure up in thin air. Um, they're all feelings. They're all things that are incredibly subjective and first person. And so for us to best work alongside cross-functional stakeholders, we very much have to keep their emotions in mind uh, as we are growing and developing our product craft. And so the key thing that I want us to keep in mind as we work through our lecture today is that every human being has emotions. Um, and when people experience negative emotions, that is a pain point, uh, irrespective of whether you, know, you are quickly moving through, let's say, a real estate transaction, uh, or you are paying for medical bills, or really anything. If you feel negative emotions during that process, even if you got to the end result you wanted, that negative emotion is a pain point. And on the flip side, if you feel positive emotions throughout the process, that's a solution. That is something that is very compelling. Uh, and makes people happy to use the product again. And so because our job is to solve people's pain, it's our job to turn these negative emotions into positive emotions, right? We want to convert these pain points into solutions. And so that's why it's so important for us to um, gain mastery over the skill sets that come with emotional intelligence, because it's actually very core to our day-to-day -day work. So one of the things I just want to make really clear for folks is that emotional intelligence actually comes in lots of different forms. And so it's not just one thing that you just uh, you know, fire and forget. Uh, it's very much something that needs to be built on over time in these various facets. And so they're actually two core flavors and they're independent from you. Uh, there's the emotional intelligence that you have with working with yourself. 
And there's emotional intelligence in working with others. And so I want to just you know, make this really clear for um, everyone attending. Just because you are good at understanding and managing your own emotions doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to be naturally good at understanding and working with other people's emotions. And the flip side is also true. Um, a lot of people who are really great at perceiving other people's emotions, sometimes they neglect their own emotional needs. And that can be very dangerous. It can put someone uh, at risk of burnout. Um, and it can make them a lot less effective at delivering uh, positive impact in the world. And so we need to keep in mind that we need to grow in emotional intelligence, both in terms of working with ourselves as well as working with other people. And so to help us better understand the journey that we're embarking on, uh, really the way that I think about it is that for working with your own emotions, there are really two layers. Uh, the first step is to perceive our own emotions, to be aware of our own emotions. And then from there, once we are able to perceive them, we can then work through managing them and reacting to them in a way that helps to increase our productivity and our happiness in life. And similarly, when we are working with other people, uh, we similarly need to first master awareness of their emotions before we can start to manage their emotions and help move those emotions in a direction that is valuable for them and for us. And so with that, um, I'm gonna first dive into uh, self-emotional intelligence um, before tackling um, other emotional intelligence.